Today's episode will be kind of embarrassing because I'll be sharing with you my experiences and educational background that got me to where I am now, but I will be incorporating into it old pictures and video clips if I can get them to work from when I was a kid or a teenager. So that'll be embarrassing, but it's part of the story, so I feel like I've got to include them. You gotta move right now. I will also be sharing with you the second YouTube channel that I've had since I was a teenager. It's not active anymore, but I've never shared it before, so this will be interesting. Anyway, enjoy today's story about how I got to where I am. <gasps> Can you go dancing? Good girl! Good dancing! What a pretty girl! You're a, you're a good girl. As I'm sure you already well know, I have always been an animal lover. It started with cats when I was really young, and then once I realized I was allergic to cats and dogs, I had to take an alternative route if I wanted to continue having pets. So when I was in fifth grade at 10 years old, I received my very first parakeets named Sunny and Timmy, and they were the gateway animal into the exotic pet world, basically. Shortly afterwards, I got a couple of cockatiels named Katie and Kyle. Kyle was really cool. He knew how to talk. And when I was 14, I kind of jumped in size and got my first macaw. It was a green wing macaw. He was a disabled bird. He only had a couple of toes. His name was Buddy, and he was the bird that got me hooked on macaws. I think they're my favorite type of bird to work with. They're just incredible animals. Also at 14 years old is when I started my first job. I worked at an ice cream store called Maggie Moose. They still have my favorite ice cream that I've ever had before. I worked there for a couple of years, but then when I was 16, I started working at a cookie shop instead. I was a professional cookie decorator at Cookies by Design. In case you couldn't already tell, I have a huge sweet tooth, so working at both a specialty ice cream store and a specialty cookie store, I consumed way more sugar than I should have on a daily basis, but it was so delicious the calories didn't count, I figured. At 16, working at Cookies by Design, a couple of my like pet ownership things changed and I no longer had my green wing macaw or my cockatiels. My parakeets had passed away a while beforehand, but instead, I, at 16 years old, adopted Cheyenne. I got her from a breeder's house, a breeder. She tried pairing up birds and it just didn't work out because she didn't provide them with very good homes. And Cheyenne was plucking even before I got her. If you look at old pictures of her, you can definitely tell that there's more feathers from back then when I, for the first few years I had her. And slowly over time, she has fewer feathers on her chest and her legs. And this, yes, could partially be due to her feather plucking habit, which was originally caused by stress from her old owner and just became a bad habit, like chewing on your Nails. That has maybe gotten worse over the years, but I think most of her now lack of feathers is due to the fact that the follicles are no longer functioning properly. You see, when a parrot plucks their feathers for too long, those follicles run out of feathers to make, essentially, and the uh, follicles just don't work anymore and no more feathers grow from them. So all of these follicles on her crop, here, let's show. All these follicles were dead before I got her, so that's why she's never had feathers on her crop. Same with her back, if you can see that. There's never been feathers on her back since I've had her. The ones that have changed the most would be her chest feathers, and that's because they do kind of grow in still, but they're slowly dying off too. So it's unfortunate, but I'm getting a progressively more naked bird as I have her. But your personality makes up for it. You're a good girl. I still love you. By the time I was 17 years old, I had also acquired a military macaw named Oliver. He was the goofiest macaw I have ever owned. He was a really fun bird. And I also uh, acquired a Congo African Grey. And African Grey parrots are very smart birds. I actually purchased mine as a freshly weaned baby from a wonderful breeder. I named him Oscar and he knew how to say over a hundred words and phrases. He could count to ten, he knew tricks. I did a lot of clicker training with him to do like basketball, ring toss, things like that. And I was so obsessed with parrots at this time of my life that I would record him doing his tricks, like the ring toss or the bowling, and I would upload those to a little channel I had called McCulliver 2, where you can still see today these really old, poor quality videos of my African Grey and the other parrots I've had in the past. However, you don't have to go check those out because, like I said, they're really poor quality videos, and don't subscribe because it's not an active channel anymore. 
The last big thing that happened when I was 17 years old is that I left my cookie decorating job and I started working for PetSmart. I worked in the pet care department and that job actually helped me pay for college. I graduated, let me back up, I graduated high school in 2009 and during that time I got my first year of college done with through the PSEO program. If you're in high school or junior high, I highly recommend if your state offers it taking advantage of the PSEO program because it's post-secondary enrollment option, I believe it stands for, if I remember correctly. Uh, but basically it's free tuition and free books while you're in high school. It's like a nice perk to getting a head start on college. I completed an entire year, which saved me not only a year of money from college tuition, but also an entire year of studying by the time I graduated from high school. Anyway, after I graduated high school, I continued working at PetSmart, and that's actually when I met my first boyfriend named Ed, who I am now married to. I married a customer. Ed was shopping at PetSmart. He had recently acquired a blue and gold macaw of his own, so we met over parrots, and of course he was referred to me, being the the bird nerd at PetSmart, uh, and I gave him the advice he needed to take care of it, and we just kind of clicked from there. He likes to tease me about it all the time, because I married a customer. After high school, I went on to complete my now second year of college at a local community college, just to get my generals done. And once that was completed, I transferred to the University of Minnesota, where I finished my bachelor's degree in fisheries and wildlife, with an emphasis on wildlife. So I took classes including zoology and dendrology, mammalogy, ornithology, because I was obsessed with birds. Ornithology is the study of birds. And when I graduated, I luckily found a job with the Minnesota DNR as an interpretive naturalist. <laughs> However, it was just a temporary or a, a, a seasonal job. Basically, at this position, I worked at a specific state park throughout the summer, and I had to create programs to connect park visitors to natural resources in a hands-on and engaging way. So this is where I started learning how to do programs initially, I'm, and I loved it. I really liked doing these programs, whatever subject they were about. I taught about eagles, I taught about trees, I taught about geology a lot at the specific park I was at, and my favorite program I did was really anything that included wildlife or actual animals. It was at this time that Ed and I had recently acquired our very first snake, which was actually his snake. It was an albino ball python named Athena, and I used her in some of my very first rudimentary reptile programs as a naturalist. Even though being a naturalist was an awesome job and I loved it, it was sadly only a seasonal position. So I worked as a naturalist during the summer months when the park was busiest, and then during the fall, winter, and spring, I worked at PetSmart again. I did this for two years, and unfortunately, after two years, that was the cap with this position with the DNR. It was a temporary job where you could only work two summers before having to relocate to a different park or finding another job altogether. Not wanting to just keep relocating every two years, I decided I really needed to pursue something that was more permanent and year-round. So what I did in the meantime while I was searching for this perfect job was I went back to PetSmart full-time in a management position and Ed and I got married and bought a house. But because of the craziness in working a couple of jobs, I also worked part-time during this like weird transition period. I worked as an aquarium cleaner for like senior living homes. It was just nuts. I was working so many hours I could not give all the attention I needed to to the three parrots that I had. So I found good homes for the military macaw and the African gray, but we kept Cheyenne. She was the ring bearer at our wedding after all. You're always going to be in our family. But now is when the reptiles come into play. Shortly after moving into our house, Ed and I started attending local herpetological society meetings. And at our very first meeting, we adopted, or I adopted, my very first snake, which was Janet, this bull snake. I still have him today. That's why I have quite a soft spot for him. He's starting to get pretty old and he's in zombie shed mode right now, but he'll be fine for today's video. Anyway, we adopted him and that's when I started the, ge the gears started moving and I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could still continue a naturalist type position while working with reptiles at the same time. You see, while working at PetSmart throughout the years, I started to realize how much easier reptiles are to take care of than birds. They, I mean, what other animal can you feed once a week or once every other week and get away with it, right? I also quickly discovered after working at PetSmart that snakes don't chew on your furniture or squawk, talking about you, Cheyenne, or need attention or poop every 20 minutes. So reptiles are starting to look really good for me. So that's kind of why we transitioned to reptiles from birds. 
And then I started putting two and two together and I was like, I really liked doing those programs for the park and I really like reptiles. So I wonder if I can make my own job where I'm teaching people about reptiles at various parks, libraries, scout troop meetings, and so forth. But then I found the perfect job opportunity for me. It was a management position at a cave. I'm not gonna say the exact cave because things didn't end very well and they probably wouldn't appreciate me calling them out, but I worked at a cave that was local to my area and it was awesome. It had great potential as a lifelong career. Basically, I was a naturalist, but underground. I was like within touching distance from bats that were hibernating within the cave. It was so cool. I gave cave tours. I taught people about geology and how caves are formed and stalactites and stalagmites, which by the way, stalactites hold tight to the ceiling and stalagmites might grow up or they might get stepped on. That's how you remember the difference. Anyway, sorry, cave naturalist coming back. Anyway, it was a great job. However, the management there and my coworkers were horrible to work with. I went home crying every day because of how much they would belittle me and yell at me for being a new manager, a new employee. And you know, I decided that if I am this upset about a position, it doesn't matter how cool of a job it is. If I am crying on my way home, it's not worth putting up with. So I debated for a little while what I was going to do. I had already left PetSmart to take on this cave management position. And thankfully Ed was there for me and he encouraged me to go off on my own and start up Snake Discovery. And that's where it all originated from was Ed encouraging me to do the job of my dreams. I spent the next three months creating a curriculum for my program that I would travel with, as well as gathering reptiles that I would use during it. And then I became a registered LLC. Things were kind of slow at first, just like any business starting off, especially a weird, unique business like Snake Discovery Educational Reptile Programs. But I spent the first year just advertising and getting my name out there. And then by the second year, things really started taking off. And I, I, that's when I realized this is something that I could do full time. After these programs, say at like a library, I would often have families approach me asking how to take care of the animal during my show that they fell in love with, like say the fat-tailed gecko everyone seemed to fall in love with, or the uh, milk snake that I would bring. And I would answer some of their questions, but I had to, I was kind of on a schedule, so, and I still am. I have to like take off to my next program right away. So I started feeling bad that I couldn't answer all of their questions. And that's when I was like, well, what if I could direct them to a video I made on YouTube? So it's facts and recommendations that I agree with because I'm making the video. So that's really where the channel started was giving me an easier opportunity to teach people about reptiles after a show by just giving them a link to a video that I made that they could learn from. But it turns out people, I guess, around the world want to also learn about reptiles. So the YouTube channel took off more than I was expecting. And now it's a major part of my day-to-day -day life. And it's been a lot of fun. So I kind of juggle the um, YouTube channel and my programs on a day-to-day -day basis. I also, um, when I was in college, started up exotic pet expos in the Minnesota and Wisconsin area. So I'm an event coordinator for those, but that's a whole nother story for another day. I kind of have three jobs, YouTube, snake discovery programs, and the fairs or expos. And those are the three things that keep me busy every day. But that's kind of the story of Emily. It was quite a journey, but I will say every job I had, whether it was a good experience or a bad one, taught me something new and it was a stepping stone that I needed to take in order to make it to where I am now. So I'm thankful for each and every one of those jobs, whether I liked the position or not. I really wish the cave would have worked out. I mean, now I'm happier I think where I am now, but the cave had great potential. It's just too bad that the managers were the way that they are. That just goes to show you though that your coworkers can make or break a job. I kind of only worked there for a week and a half. This is Candy Corn, by the way. He is an albino Nelson's milk snake that I picked up from the last Tinley Reptile Show. When I initially got him, he was wiggly as all get out and he was wild, but look how much better he's gotten, guys. I've been working with him to trade him in to do programs someday and he's doing really well. Anyway, that kind of covers all the steps that I had to take to get to where I am today. It was a crazy ride, but well worth it in the end. I couldn't be happier with what I'm doing for a living nowadays. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm sorry if it was kind of boring, but for those of you who were wondering, this video is for you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.